are you guys feeling this morning? Fired up! Fired up! Fired up! Fired up! Fired up! Pretty impressed for an outdoor circus and singing some awesome this morning. Come on! Come on, man! Come on, man! You know, I would be... I would be remiss if I didn't start my sermon off right. You know, a dear uh, sister, and really a mother to everyone here, uh, her birthday was yesterday. I want to honor her. Yes. My zero's birthday was yesterday. Oh, come on! Yeah. 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 I'm going to start off my sermon, by, and I hope you guys can join me. We're going to sing Happy Birthday. Amen. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Woo! Happy Birthday, dear Azira. Happy Birthday to you. We know it's been a special time, but it, I know it's, uh, it's been a while since you had a birthday without Corey, and I want to honor you, sis, and the Lord. We love thank you, you a lot. so much. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. God, thank you so much for bringing us to another day. God, we know that uh, thousands to millions of people die every single day. God, we're so grateful for life. God, thank you so much for your son who was sacrificed on the cross for us. Uh, and although we were still sinners, God, you died for all of us. God, I pray that this morning we reflect on the message, God. Father, I pray that, that people are not listening to an imperfect man before them, but they are listening to the message. Come on. God, I pray that the message can move their hearts to do something great today. God, I pray that it moves their hearts to do incredible things to bring a smile to your face. God, I pray that uh, you move me aside and that you yourself speak to your people. God, we thank you. We love you. We dedicate the service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God, on my lesson this morning, or afternoon, the purposes of God. The purposes of God. Now, most people think there's just one purpose. I think even as disciples, we can get faked out that there's just one purpose. Today, we're going to talk about three purposes of God. Point number one is a universal purpose. Point number one, the word all in the Greek means all. Yeah. Point number two, it's a collective purpose. You can't push a bus without a motor by yourself. Point number three is an individual purpose. Not fulfilling your destiny is like being short a penny. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Amen. You know, there's many purposes of God, and today we're going to dive into it. See, I believe that today uh, some came uh, with the notion of not knowing your purpose. Some, some don't even know that there is a purpose to be had. Yeah. But I want to encourage you that God has purposes for your life. Here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we're going to talk about a universal purpose God has. Amazing. First Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 3. As we know, Timothy is writing to his son in the faith. And we pick up in chapter 2 of verse 3. First Timothy 2, verse 3. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. This is incredible. This, this shows God's universal purpose. He says that, that this pleases God. This is good. Well, what is good? You go to the first uh, part of the verse there, the chapter, it talks about petition, praying, intercession, thanksgiving to be made for all people. And he's saying here, this is good stuff, right? And it pleases God. But then in verse 4, it shows us the heart of God. He says, God our Savior wants every person, all people, to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. See, I looked up the word all in the Greek, and, it, and I, was, I was thinking for, I was hoping for like a nice little nugget there, you know? Whenever you dig into the Hebrew or Aramaic or the Hebrew, you're looking for a nice little nugget in the Bible. But it's just very simple. It just translates to all. God wants every person in the entire world to be saved, to come yeah. to a knowledge of yeah. the truth. See, in the Greek is past, translates to any, everyone, as many as, <clears throat> thoroughly, I like that word, thoroughly, you know, who talks like that, thoroughly, yes. God wants 
all men to be saved thoroughly, right? Whole whosoever, you get the point. God wants everyone to be saved. You look at the word saved in the Greek, it's sozo, and it's to protect. In the King James Version, you, it translates to save or self. So loosely translated, this verse can be loosely translated to say to save, to deliver, or to protect me from me. Wow. See, you don't know it, but you need to be saved from yourself. Wow. Right. Well, you ask me why? I'm a good guy. Educated. I got an iPhone. Come on. I, got, I don't got a cell phone no more. I got a smartphone. <laughs> and we think very highly of ourselves. Yeah. And then we creep behind closed doors, and I really see your life. That behind closed doors, people need saving from self. See, I don't know about you, but I got myself into a lot of problems before I became a Christian. Right? Amen. I could have had a girl pregnant in college my freshman year. Woo. That would have torn my, my whole future and, and, and education away. And then, if that wasn't bad enough, I flunked out of college. That was that was my plans for my life. <laughs> I flunked out of college. Then I got myself into a lot of debt. Oh, baby. See, we need saving from self. And God's vision and God's heart is that all men be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. See, people need saving because of sin. It's very simple. You talk about what I need to be saved from yourself, you love sin, right? Sin is interesting. We love sin so much, it gets us into bad things. But sin Come on, Mason. is like how Indonesians hunt monkeys. <laughs> Come on, explain, bro. Come on, Nat. Look at that simmer right there. <laughs> Sin is like how Indonesians hunt oh. monkeys. Okay, we're ready. So what they do to hunt the monkey is they take a tree and they take this jar. And there's a skinny net to the jar. And they tie it to the tree. And so the monkey's like smelling it from miles away, right? It's like, man, what's this? Man, there's something here. He's looking around. Then he sees this jar at the tree. And then he creeps up to the jar. And there's a good smell coming from this jar. He looks in the jar. He's like, whoa, there's fruit in the jar. His friends are fired up, right? <laughs> and he's like, let me, let me. Oh, gosh, this fruit feels awesome. You should feel the fruit. It's great. It's not too hard, not too soft. It's just perfect. Right. Now, when he tries to take the juice, the, the, the fruit out, he can't take the fruit out. Because he doesn't want to let go of the fruit. See, the neck is skinny enough for his arm to go in. But with the fruit, he can't take his arm back out. But he's not going to let go of the fruit. Yeah. I mean, when do you ever find a free fruit, right? <laughs> this guy doesn't want to let go of the fruit. Be surprised, boy. He, now he's struggling with the fruit. And now the, the, the hunters come out with swords and clubs about to kill this monkey. But guess what the monkey does? Do you think he runs? No. No, no way. He's holding on to the, like, oh, way, stay away. <laughs> See, the monkey sees danger coming, but he doesn't want to let go of the fruit. Wow. Come on, bro. That describes us with sin. See, in, in this jar is sin, and we love the feel of sin. Not too hard, not too soft. It's just right. It smells good. It looks good. good. If an artist, if we had an artist here, they draw it and look awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we see danger coming, right? We see divorce coming. Uh -oh. We wow. see our girlfriends getting pregnant. Wow. We see us getting addicted to uh, alcohol and, and drugs, and yet we don't want to let go of the sin. Come on, man. That's why we need saving from ourselves. Oh, yeah, come on. Right. It's because we love. People are obese. Yep. Right? Yep. What is their choice of sin? Or what is their choice of food? It's sin. Some people are alcoholics. What's their choice of bottle? Sin. Some people are womanizers. Right? That describes our generation. What is their choice women? Sin. See, in God's eyes, sin is sin. Yeah. And we need help because we are flat swimming in sin. 
we're backstroking in sin. Right, we have a jacuzzi of sin and we dive in. <laughs> right, we have our little martini of sin and we're chilling there. We have a cigar of sin in our mouth and we're chilling in sin. And, and it's awesome. And people love it so much, even though they see danger coming in their lives. Come on, man. They don't want to let go of the fruits. Huh. Good. What is the answer? The truth. The Bible yeah. says here that God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. See, but how are we to save those in other parts of the world? Because we're not just thinking about America here. Now, America's jacked up, but there's other places that are jacked up too. And so the amazing vision that God had was to take jacked up people <laughs> to save other jacked up people. Yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> and so there's no hierarchy in the church. I can't think because, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm who I am, I'm better than them, right? You can't think because you make contribution right. bread that you're better than me. You can't think that because you're in the camera, behind the camera, that you're better than someone else. Right, Come Aaron? on, me. Amen. No. Every single person, we need everyone. Come on. Who has this knowledge of the truth and is willing to sacrifice to take this gospel to the whole world. Amen. Well, how do we do that? I'm always fascinated with this idea. How do we do this? Well, we, well of course, we got to send people. Yes, they're messed up. I'm messed up too. We just got to help each other, pat each other up, and send people out. We send them out. Well, how do we send them out? We got to, how do we go to a place like India? Money. Well, we can't walk there. I mean, I don't know about you. I can't walk on water. <laughs> right? But well, we got to take a plane there. Well, we got to pay for the plane ticket. Wait, wait a minute. If we're going to stay there and make sure that we build an amazing uh, church there, we're going to need a, a visa. Because you can't go to another country without a visa. You got to go with a visa. So we got to pay for the visa. Well, how do we pay for the, the, the missionaries going out to eat, to take care of their families? Well, we pay for that stuff. See, it's incredible that in this church, every single dime that we spent planting churches has come from your wallet. Come on. Every single dime. We're not getting uh, donations all the time from other people. Every single money that, that we've gone to build this church has come from our members. That's to be commended. Come on, bro. Because we, like I said, we put our money where our mouths are. Come on, bro. We don't just talk religion. We don't just talk church. Come on, Come on bro. We live. Come on. Okay. Today is special missions. Amen. 50% special missions turn in. Now, now, for some of you guys, I don't know about you, but when it comes to money, I have very little faith. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, I, I grew up very poor. <laughs> and and the thought of there being a lot of money, I didn't. Let's just say I didn't dream about that, right? Because I grew up every day with no money, right. eating uh, top ramen. Top ramen became my best friend. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Right? I knew I knew how to open the package right. <laughs> I knew I knew the right. If you had ever eaten top ramen raw before, you've not lived. Right? <laughs> I ate it raw. Not, not put too much sauce on there. Just a little bit. Just just right. Yes. Some people like to put water on it. That's awesome too, right? That was my life growing up. So the concept of money was was nothing I dreamed of, like nothing I saw. So when it comes to raising special missions, I don't know about you guys, but I can really lack faith in that. <coughs> yeah. But look at what the sacrifice has done these last couple of years. Yeah. We've now sent churches in the United States. We've planted churches in Lagos, Nigeria now. Come on, we have bro. five churches in Haiti. Come on, come on, bro. come on. Where, where there are disciples preaching the same thing we preach, living the same way we live, maybe a little more sacrificial actually, yeah. to be in third world uh, parts of the world. But but the concept is we give financially. So some of you guys may have not started raising special missions, and now we're at 50% turn in, and, and now we're feeling like flustered. That's how I get, right? I stick my head in the ground, I became a pro at that too, right? You stick your head in the ground and nothing Amazing. happens. Nothing gets go. done. Then you bring your head up out of the ground and now you have all these things to get done. 
<laughs> but we serve a mighty God. Yeah. Come on. See, God created the universe. Like, God has places in the world where he has treasure hidden that, that are worth trillions of dollars. If he, if he wanted to give us the money to go the whole world right now, he could open up the ground and give us gold. Right. And we can evangelize the world right now. What does that say then about his expectation on disciples? Come on, bro. We have to live the life. Yeah. We have to walk the walk and we have to talk the talk. Come on. And we put our money where our mouth is and we send out missionaries and we don't just send them out. We support them while they're out there. Yeah. yeah. Come on, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So God's purpose is a universal purpose. He wants everyone to experience this around the world. Isn't this incredible what we have here in Southland? Come on, bro. Come on. I love what we have here in Southland. But I want other people to experience this. Yeah. I want other people to, to meet my awesome family, meet my incredible sisters, meet my awesome, mighty brothers. Come on, yeah, come on. I want people to come experience this. How do we do that? spread the word yeah we spread the truth point number two you can't push a bus without a motor by yourself <laughs> you guys enjoy doing that yeah. go to John chapter 13 John. you know if you can give your special missions right now I want to encourage John. you to give it the missionaries are waiting now and, and the money is needed as soon as possible so if you can write a check right now to, to meet all of our missionaries' needs, and I want to encourage you guys to do that. Uh, uh, November 13th, when we have our collection, it is not just a date where we put and everyone get, has to give on this day. No, people can give right now because the need uh, is yesterday. Right. The need was yesterday. People need help yesterday. Uh, but in John chapter 13, verse 34 or 35. <laughs> John 13, verse 34 and 35. It's Jesus speaking here. He says, A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Right. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It's Love interesting. You. Every time we teach this passage, I always like to ask, why is it a new command? Yeah. Right yeah. On, bro. We hear this in the Old Testament. Love your neighbor as thyself. Mm. So why does Jesus say it's a new command? Now, I know Jesus is not a liar, so I need to figure out why this is a new command. Come on. Now, it's, it's written in the scriptures. He says... <laughs> the Holy Spirit like, ran. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're watching this, I'm inspired by you. <laughs> he says, a new command I give you, love one another. Okay, that doesn't still answer my question. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. See, the, what Jesus came to do was to fulfill all scripture. So the Old Testament said if you uh, committed adultery, you were to be put to death. Thank God we're not living in the Old Testament. <laughs> in the New Testament, Jesus came to, comes to fulfill all scripture. He says, even if you look at a woman lustfully, Come on, bro. you've already committed adultery in your heart. Wow. Like, man, that's intense, right? Yeah. It's yeah. the same thing with love. He says, no longer are you to love each other the way you think you should love each other. Come on, come on. Come on. But you are now to love each other the way I have shown my love on, for you. Yeah, come on, bro. Come on. See, because every single person has their cracks in love. Come on. Right? For me, I, I can love anyone. I, I'm really relatable. I can hang out with anyone, really. But before I was a disciple, if you wrong me, I will control and all the weak you from my life. Oh, man. <laughs> that's, like, that's like old school, right? You control old delete person. Right? Old school. Right? You are not my friend on Facebook. Right? I don't, when, I, when I see you in a room, I don't even look your direction. Wow. See, that's my love. And every single person has their cracks of love. See, if we had Jesus' love, there would be no racism. There would be no, uh, it would not be necessary to talk about all black life matters. 
if we had Jesus' understanding of love. Yeah. Come on, Rafi. There would be no homicide. There would be no rape. There would be none of this wicked sin that's destroying our world. Come on, bro. If only we were to love each other the way Jesus has shown his love for us. Yeah. This, this love that the Bible talks about is super powerful. See, the kingdom, the kingdom is like a bus without a motor. Right? It's a bus without a motor, and it takes people getting outside the bus to push the bus along. Yeah. Now, this bus is, 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 is gaining speed, right? Because we're converting people, we're bringing people into the kingdom, and it's awesome. But there's still some of you who are too comfortable sitting in the bus and not pushing with the people pushing outside the bus. Wow. Come on, Come on bro. Come on, bro. See, the kingdom, it takes everyone. You found the bus. Get out of the bus Come and start on. pushing the bus. Yeah. Come on, no motor in this bus. We need everyone's legs, everyone's strength come to come and push the bus. Because we got to take this bus to uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Oh, yeah. We got to take this bus to even the islands. Come on, come on. Right, we have like little to no islanders here. Hey. hey. I'm an islander. I'm going to work on that. Gonna work on that. But according to scripture, to the ends of the earth signifies the islands. Because until we get to the islands, we have not evangelized the world. Yeah, come on. So we got to go to the islands. What is that going to take? Everyone pushing. Everyone pushing the bus. Good. Come on. What is that going to take? Jesus' love. Yeah. Jesus' love. See, our love has destroyed marriages. Mm. Like I always, I, as many times as I can, I talk about the divorce rate. Yeah. Because, believe it or not, every single one of us desire a companion in life. And so, yeah, for us young guys in college, we might not even be thinking about settling down. But one day you'll get old and you'll want to settle down. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't want to be by your lonesome. No. But, but we, look at, we look at marriages today and, and it's terrible. Yeah. For a young man, it's unmotivating. It's like not motivating any young man to want to be married. On, it's bro. not motivating these amazing young women to desire to be treated as a princess. Yeah, yeah, come on, bro. Because we don't have Jesus' love. See, I've often heard, sadly, uh, that it doesn't feel like family in the church. Whoa. My question is always simple. See, I, I keep Christianity very, very simple. My question to someone who can state something like that is, what are you doing? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. See, it's, Come on. it's easy for me to sit down and see all your sin, and I can write a book on your sin. Come on. And I'm sure if you sat down with me, and I talked enough, because I like talking, you would sit and be able to write a novel on my on my life and all my sin. Yeah. Right? See, if, if that's how Jesus wanted to build a church, it would not have come off the ground. The reason why we still talk about Christianity in 2016 was because he pushed his love and not your love. Yeah, come on, bro. See, my question, if you don't feel like family, what are you doing? Yeah. Who are you hanging out with? Who are you pulling Lay aside? Out. What come young on. Christian are you pulling aside to have a quiet time with? Come on, bro. Who, who's struggling in the church that you're getting with to make sure they're having their quiet times? Man. What marriage is suffering that you're not getting in there to help? Come on, See, when we push our love into the church, it doesn't work. The motor is not even there, guys. We're in a bus with no motor. We need everyone pushing the bus. Come on, yeah, bro. come on, bro. How are we going to go to the 8 million souls in Southland? <laughs> not your love. Jesus' love. Come on. Come on. This whole, this whole Black Lives Matter, we can beat that with Jesus. Come on. Come on, Mason. All right, no. All right, no. Are you pushing or are you chilling in the bus? See, some of us, like, we can get so comfortable in Christianity. And this is where Christianity is so easy to just relax in Christianity. Because it tells you hope, gives you stuff like love, future, marriage, awesome marriages, right? And, and yet, it's so easy to just get comfortable. Yeah. And just live the life of a Christian and go through the motions. Yeah. But there are people who are tirelessly pushing the bus. Because as the bus is gaining more converts, it's getting heavy. 
So we need more and more people coming off the bus to push this Good bus. Good point. Yeah, come on. What are you doing? What role do you have in the church? Yeah. Who are you getting with throughout the week? If you don't feel love, you got to look at yourself. If you don't feel love, look in the mirror. What are you doing about it? I put before you, church, if we tap in to Jesus' love, I guarantee it because the Bible says so. Yeah. This church will explode. Do you believe it? I believe it. Come on, yeah, bro. Come on. I believe. Imagine, imagine a church where no one is sitting on the bus, but every single person is off the bus pushing the bus. My challenge is very simple. Call five people this week. Come on, bro. I was given this challenge as a young Christian and it saved my life. My best friend, Javier, who eventually became my best man in my wedding, challenged me to call five disciples in our church every week. So I started calling people. And some of these people that are now are, are some of my dearest friends, I built a relationship over the phone. What do you talk about? I don't know, just ask them how they're doing. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll be so surprised at how much encouragement you get from just calling someone randomly, just to encourage them. I called a brother one time trying to encourage him, and I ended up, on the flip side, started, I was encouraged myself. We ended up talking for an hour on the phone. See, we can't just preach this stuff, guys. Yeah. Enough, we've done enough preaching. You, I mean... The last two scriptures I looked at, you guys all know it. You guys are experts at it. But are we living it? Come on. Come on I want to challenge you. Don't take this challenge lightly. Call five people this week. Call them and make them your best friend. Javier, who gave me that challenge, became my best man. Come on, bro. Some of these guys that I called became my groomsmen in my wedding. That's my challenge for you. The people that you call need to become your groomsmen and your bridesmaid at your wedding. Mm -hmm. That's the type of love that God calls us to. And that's that type of love that would change the world in our day, amen? Amen. Point number three, the last point. Not fulfilling your destiny is like being short a penny. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis 19 verse 15, we see this incredible story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And what an incredible story to explain this world today. Yep. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yep. We're living in Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. yeah. So God makes a plan to destroy the city. And Abraham, having Jesus' love, pleaded for the souls of people in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's like, God, please don't do this. What if there was ten righteous men? And he's pleading with God for the souls of the people in the city. But there's another character in the story. There's Abraham's nephew, Lot. Okay? We're going to look at the differences between Lot and Abraham this afternoon. Pick up in verse 15. Genesis 19. Verse 15. With the coming of dawn... Actually, skip down to verse 18. So we know the angels come to Lot and his family and tell him, Hey, quick, get out of here. God is going to destroy the city. And here, he's actually going against what God wants to do. Verse 18. But Lot said to them, to the angels there, No, my lords, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to. And it is small. Let me flee to it. It is a very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, very well, I will grant this request to you. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town is called Zoar, which translates to small. Verse 23. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heavens. 
Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Law's, uh, Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. What a good passage to instill the fear of God in you, huh? Right? Amen. Here we have the angels saying, hey Lot, we're gonna, God is going to destroy these cities. Flee with your family. Get out of here. I can't do anything unless you're out of the city. And he tells them to go to the mountain where you can have refuge. And Lot, Lot was like, no, please, Lord. There's a little town over here. It's even small. If I go there, I will be rescued and I will be saved. And God, like the merciful God he is, like, sure, yeah, I'll grant this wish. But go there quickly. And we see that Lot's wife looks back and becomes a pillar of salt. Well, let's look at the difference with Abraham. Go to chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. We see that Abraham is called by God to sacrifice his only son. And it's a foreshadowing of Jesus being sacrificed that God would sacrifice His only Son, Jesus Christ. It's cool how the Bible just coincides with each other. It shows that the Bible, in fact, was inspired by God. But here Abraham is going up to the mountain, and, and God sets him up. Hey, take take your son, take some uh, firewood, and I want you to sacrifice your son today. You know, when I first read this passage, I was always like, what in the world is going on? Like, like he has one son, and he's old. It's like he can't have another son. And yet God wants to take his only son. Seems like a selfish God to me when I first read it. Then I thought, I, I started to even think that Abraham struggled with the idea of giving up his only son. But if you study out cross reference scriptures, we see that, that Abraham was the first one that talked about resurrection. Yeah. I'm not going to get in there today. I, I love that little nugget in the Bible. Yeah. It shows that Abraham believed that Jesus would resurrect his son back from the dead. So there was no struggle to give up his son, but he was going to do it because Jesus asked him to do it. He goes here and he goes up to the mountain. And it's incredible. He's getting ready to slay his son and God comes and stops him. You know when you're about ready to just... And God's like, hey, wait up! Abraham, it's okay! Hey, chill! <laughs> Abraham's like, sure, you sure, God? I'm sure, ready. I, I have my swing ready and everything, right? Yeah. Let's pick up here in verse 15. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time, and he said, I swear by myself. Only God can do something like that. Yeah. I swear by myself. <laughs> Declares the Lord that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you obeyed me. Come on. The size of your blessings is directly proportional to the size of your God. For Lot, in his eyes, God was a little God. In Abraham's eyes, God was a mighty God. Come on. Yeah, come on, bro. And we see the difference with Lot and Abraham. See, Lot settled for Zoar, which means small. Right? Yeah. When you think of an inheritance, you don't want a small little patch of land. But he was willing to settle because in his eyes, God was a small God. Abraham, like Lot, was told to go to the mountain to sacrifice his son. Lot didn't want to go to the mountain. He settled for Zoar. When Abraham went up to the mountain, he became the father of all nations. Come on. Wow. Wow. Good. <laughs> See, Abraham went up to the mountain. He became the father of all nations. Lot settled for small, or Zoar, and became the father of the Moabites. If you know scripture, the Moabites became the number one enemy of Israel. 
especially even in Jesus, in Jesus' time, it was the same thing. So by settling for small, he eventually gave birth to enemies of God. See, not fulfilling your destiny is like being short a penny. I remember a time as a young as a young man in college, and if you're in college, you ain't got a lot of money. <laughs> Come on. And if you're me now, you still don't have a lot of money. But purpose of the story. Come on. So I'm at the store and I'm thinking about what I want to buy. I'm a sweets type of guy. Pop tarts. Yeah. yeah. Pop tarts. <laughs> Some with Nutella on it. Uh, nice little coconut water. I love. I'm thinking about what I'm gonna buy. Like man, I'll get this. I'll get that. Awesome. So the, the the mistake I made was not checking my pocket before I went. Oh. oh. <laughs> nice. Don't do that, guys. It's a struggle, bro. That's real. God will humble yeah. you. Yeah, that is real. So I go and I'm I'm excited. I'm about to eat this thing. It's gonna be awesome. Like that fruit is like, man, I can't wait to eat this thing. I go up to the cash register and he tells me the price. I'm like, no problem. Today I got money. <laughs> oh, I pull out my money and I'm starting to pay. I'm like, oh, this is looking good. I got five. Oh, I'm short of penny. Like, oh, that's not a big deal. But, you, but you're a little embarrassed, but still you want some sympathy. So I'm like patting myself, just waiting for him to say, Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> you got a pen. <laughs> and the guy let me go. He's like, oh, it's just a penny. Please. Thank you. I can eat. It's awesome. See, I believe biblically, Lot made, made it to heaven. But he was short a pen. He like barely made it. Why? You didn't fulfill his destiny. Come on, come on, bro. So you go up to the cash register and you're trying to pay for this stuff, and you're like one penny short because you don't want to fulfill God's destiny for you to go to the mountain instead of settling for little Zoa. Come on, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, mate. This morning, have you settled? Are you chilling in Zoar? Have you built a little tent for yourself? <coughs> Put your family name on it and, it, and you're chilling. You're thinking about building a pool next. Yeah. Some of us are just chilling in Zoar. It's awesome in Zoar. I built a tree. Look at my tree. Zoar. It's great. And we've settled for the small blessings when God has in store for us being a father of nations. Come on. If you're a disciple, if you're a disciple here, I want to challenge you with something. Come on, bro. Stop settling for Zoar. Every single person should have a role in the church. I love Nikki. Nikki Smokes came last week. She came to Leaders. And Nikki Smokes came up to me and Ron was like, and even to Richard, I want to do something. Give me a role. I'm like, girl, we've been waiting. We've been waiting for you five months ago. And right then and there, we gave her a role. You can be an awesome usher. Great smile. She's bubbly. She'll be a great usher to bring people in and come into church. But that inspired me to think about our house church. Come on, bro. Who in our house church, who in your Bible talk, does not have a role? I want to challenge every single Bible talk here. Have vision for your people. What, what is their role for the church? We need people carrying babies. For the, for the, for the young girls. Uh, really, like, I don't know if you guys know this. But being, being a, a single campus student is preparing you for your future. Yeah. Yep. I didn't know it at the time, but living in a brother's household was preparing me for marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because uh, I got attitudes with brothers eating my food. Oh, yeah. I got <laughs> attitudes with brothers not paying rent on time. And, uh, and, and then I'm a little self righteous, but I need help paying rent sometimes. We <laughs> <laughs> And it prepared me for my future. It prepared me being a, a husband and it prepared me being a father. But I think some of some of uh, our sisters can feel like just being a princess in the kingdom is enough. No, we have single moms in our church that need help. Yeah. I spent almost all day with Kasai yesterday. 
and, and I needed Jesus to help me. <laughs> I love, I love my daughter. She's awesome. She lost me into this amazing little creature. You know, it's, it's great. It's a lot of fun. But then, when, when she's crying for like four or five hours, I have to pray, you know? I have to pray. We have single moms who need a nice little break. Yeah. When was the last time you offered to babysit for those single moms? Yeah, When was the last time you approach a married couple and say, hey, go for the weekend, I'll take care of the kids? Wow. See, we have to be thinking, what is my role? What, what can I do to help the kingdom advance? If it's not carrying babies, what are you doing? Come on, man. Are you an accountant? Do you have abilities to be an accountant? We need some incredible administrators. Come on. The Gaians, we're not going to have their presence long. Unless God changes their hearts. Stress that out. Stress that out. They're going to go to Chicago and do incredible things. With them leaving, we need somebody to step in and, and help with administration. What is your role? Find your role. Because if we're not settling, if we're settling for Zoar, we're not taking the blessings up on the mountain. Amen. If you're visiting with us today, I want to ask you: Are you settled? In your life, have you just settled for bare minimum? Have you just settled for the guy you're dating? Have you just settled for the girl you're dating? Have you just settled because this is a, 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 a big four-year university and it looks good on my resume? For me? Yeah. When you get to your future, what then? You, you get the American dream, you get the white picket fence, the wife and the kids, what then? The dog. <laughs> you can get a dog. I tried having a dog, it didn't work. I couldn't afford it. I can't. But dogs are expensive. Why are dogs expensive? Just give me one for free. They're like a kid. Right? You can, you can do all these things, but at the end of the day, why, why, did, why were you created? Yeah, come on, you ever bro. think of that? Yeah. Why was I created? Was I created to just be who I am? Or is there something incredible in store for me? I put before you, if you're visiting, there is something incredible for you. Come on, come on. And there are blessings that you don't even understand. Come on, bro. Blessings come that on. when it comes, it hits you like, like blindside. And you're like, wow, there is a God. Yeah, come on. Because we serve a mighty God. Yeah. I want to challenge you. If you're, if you're visiting with us today, study the Bible. Come on. Yeah. Wherever you are in your life, the Bible will fix it right now. Come on, come on bro. That's real. Where, oh, it's gonna work in a month. No, right. the Bible will work right now. Come on, bro. My Bible says that the promise is you will find God if you up. Seek, Seek him with all your hearts. hearts. With all your hearts. Come on, bro. See, God expects all. Lot didn't want to give him all, and I believe that Lot made it to heaven, but he didn't fulfill his destiny. You coming to this service today is part of that destiny. Study the Bible. Get into what, what it talks about and get into your blessings. This morning we talked about God's purposes. We looked and He has a universal purpose that all men be saved. Come on. Come to a knowledge of the truth. We saw that God has a collective purpose that we love each other the way Jesus has called us to love. Yeah. And we see that God has an individual purpose for your life. Don't settle for Zoar. Yeah. Settle for the mountain. Come on. Come Go on. up to the mountain. Get your blessings. Come on, bro. This is not a prosperity gospel. I'm not telling you you're going to get rich. No. I'm telling you you're going to find God. Come on. Yeah. You find God, your problems will be fixed like you never understood. That's real. The challenge is very simple. Do something great for God. Yeah. If that's studying the Bible, amen. Study the Bible. Fix your life. You can find God tomorrow. Come on, bro. You can find the blessings of the Bible by next week. It's that awesome. If you're a disciple today, I want to encourage you, keep pushing. Come on. Keep pushing. For some of us, get off the bus and start helping us push so that we can take the purpose of God to all the world. I love you guys very much. Come on, man.